This is the Aptitude Outdoors podcast. What is this? <laughs> you should know, Butt Munch. This is Man of War. Oh, cool. <laughs> but why is he on this stupid podcast? I, I don't know. Podcasts are stupid. No, you're stupid, dumbass. It's Aptitude Outdoors. It's like about trees or something. <laughs> Man of War rules. Who's that other guy? I don't know, dude. Some writer guy or something. Writing is stupid. Yeah, writing is for nerds. <laughs> <laughs> nerds. <laughs> Shut up, Beavis. Let's watch this stupid thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the Aptitude Outdoors podcast. Thanks for tuning back in here on YouTube, and I hope you enjoyed that goofy little intro I made. I've been wanting to do that for a long time, but I haven't had an opportunity until now because we have finally gotten a celebrity on the podcast, the one and only Lou Marulo, a.k.a. Eric Adams from the band Man of War and recurring guest on the show, Chester Moore. They're back together to tell some hunting stories from our time down at the Hunt Fish Podcast Summit in Texas, and this is one of my favorite episodes. It's hilarious, so you're not going to want to miss it, so let's dive right into it. All right, cool. We're rocking. Like yes, let's go. <laughs> All right. Yay. <laughs> I'll fit with everybody uh, else. Did. We got a chicken joining us on the podcast. If you like to come over. No, okay. Not interested. <laughs> uh, well, thank you guys. We got Lou here. We got Chester here. We're hunting. We're fishing. We're, well, I don't know what we're doing. We're down at a podcast conference. <laughs> so uh, you guys have been, you guys have been doing some hunting and stuff together for quite a while. We so, have. So uh, first off, before we dive into all that fun stuff and the, the stories of your lifetime careers, yes. um, how's the hunting been down here in Texas at this wonderful Hunt Fish podcast? It's conference? been great. I mean, every time we've been out, we've been hearing the birds. Chester's been seeing the birds. Yeah. I've seen hints, and I saw gobblers the first evening in the distance. Flipping the birds? Uh, but the problem is the combination of seeing hens, and then this morning it turned into hearing mass yeah. numbers of hens. It's translated to gobblers not interested in what we have to offer. <laughs> yeah, no matter what I threw at them, and I, I threw everything except the kitchen sink. Believe me, I did. I, but I tried all my tricks, but nothing was working that time. Yeah. I was even thinking of doing the hat trick. Oh, dude, he has this thing. He did it freaking me out in the blind. What are you doing, man? And it was like... <laughs> This guy is a master in getting turkeys to cooperate. So. I've heard you're the turkey calling master. That's what everyone's I, told me. I, I've been calling for quite a while. It's a lot of fun, but I, I pull some tricks sometimes. You know, like, like when we were, he was up in New York mm -hmm. with me, and it was opening day yep. of turkey season up there. And I said, look, I said, this spot usually gets a bird. I said, this is usually a pretty good place. And I said, normally they're, they're right behind us, and these trees behind us, and they're going to fly down to this field. And <laughs> that day... You know, I says, okay, it's starting to get light. I said, can you see the sights? You, you shoot yeah. using a shotgun. Mm -hmm. I said, can you see the sights? Yeah, I see them. I said, okay, I'm going to start my thing. So I do the tree calls first, you know, real light, real light tree calls. Nothing happened. I said, okay, fine. So then I yelp just real quietly and then. Yeah. Like you're waking yeah, up yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And then I go to fly down and I take my hat off. And I said, now don't freak out over this. Okay, this is going to. So then I, I get, here we go. And I went, I took my hat and I, I beat it against my leg as fast as I could. And I, I slowed it down eventually. And it sounded like a bird flying out of yeah. the tree. That sounds just like it, believe me. So I, when I do it, I also cackle because sometimes they <laughs> yeah. make that sound. Yeah. So I go, <laughs> and I'm thinking this guy's either the master or has way too much freaking time on his hands when he's off tour. <laughs> <laughs> like, how did you think of that? That was good, you know? <laughs> the sad thing is nothing happened after that. Yeah. <laughs> Zero. So we had a few laughs in the blind, yeah. and then and nothing was going on until later on in the morning, and then I'm looking up the field, and I see this black blob that wasn't there before, and I said, there he is. We got our binoculars. I'm looking. I says, oh, he's a shooter. He's a nice one. He's nice. And he's looking at our setup, but he's not coming. You know, he's mm -hmm. walking a little bit and then stopping, strutting and calling. He's coming a little bit further. He's not really moving too fast, you uh -huh. know. So I said, "Okay, I got to talk dirty to this bird." I said, <laughs> "So I grabbed, I grabbed my slate call, you know, mm -hmm. and I did some purrs on the slate. Yes, I started yeah. off, I go, and I went, like that. Oh man, that was the trick. That was it. <laughs> got him. Now I'm on a quest to photograph that year, the Grand Slam, which is a, a Merriam's and Osceola 
a Rio Grande, and an Eastern all in the same year. So mm. my goal is first get a picture of the bird. He's like, put the camera down. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, I'm see, these camera guys, yeah. right? I'm like, okay, get the shotgun. And uh, but <laughs> yeah. he didn't mention this bird was actually in Connecticut when he called it in. I mean, it was way, way out there. It was out there. And I've you know, I've been around turkeys for my whole life, pretty much. And that was the fast. I've seen turkeys run away from things really fast. That was the fastest <laughs> run to I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, yeah. that was fun. So I took a photo and blew its head off right afterwards. <laughs> That's what you want, man. That's it, man. Yeah, that was fun. The best of both worlds. Yeah, so I'm pretty stoked to be down here. I mean, we got rock stars. We got <laughs> Chester photography writing stars. We got yeah. podcast stars. And I don't know what I'm doing here. I have not a clue. <laughs> I haven't figured that out either. <laughs> nobody knows. I, nobody knows how I made it down here. I, like, weasel my way in somehow. You got to get your first turkey. I know. I'm, I am so nervous. I was, you guys were joking with me last night about... <laughs> My heart was going to explode. <laughs> but uh, so, so I talked to Chester in the past, man. He's got a good good career in hunting and hitting yeah. all this stuff. So how did yeah. you get into it? How how that happen? I mean, I know it's hunting, not easy being a rock star, but hunting's hard. Uh, you know what? Too. I started with my dad. Um, mm-hmm. My dad took me out when I was real young, and I was so young, he carried me on his shoulders nice. when I went out. We went out in the woods, and I still remember the smell of the, you know, the, mm-hmm. the fall smell of the oh, yeah, woods. Yeah. And, Beautiful. And... Um, you know, he set me down next to next to this big blowdown. I can see it to this day. I remember it. Mm-hmm. And he he was there, and mm-hmm. I saw a deer, mm-hmm. and so did he. But he didn't make a sound. I'm the one who did. <laughs> Dad, there's a deer. There's a deer. Dad. <laughs> I was so excited. Yeah. I was just a little kid. And he laughed about it. My dad was really, he laughed about it. And he said, well, there he goes. Okay, that's a deer. That's what we're after. And then we didn't get anything that day, obviously. But it 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 uh, it put in my, it gave me that whole hunting experience that mm-hmm. I, I never forgot it. You yeah. know, I never forgot it. And then I was kind of on my own until um, one day I was uh, in high school. And I asked the guy who was sitting behind me, a friend of mine, I said, what are you doing this weekend? He says, I'm going to get my bow out and start shooting. I said, oh, you got a bow? Yeah, yeah. Get your bow. I says, I don't have a bow. <laughs> he says, go get one. So, I, you know, I go to the cheap store. I picked up some bow and wooden arrows and, you know, a recurve bow. And I take about 10 shots with him in the back of backyard, in his backyard. And I said, okay, I'm ready. 10 <laughs> shots, I'm ready to go. Ready to Let's go. <laughs> and he took me out hunting with his father and he, and this story's great. I was in this uh, fire break, and my friend was down below me. He couldn't see me because the hill went down, and he was below that. And we were facing the woods. His dad was in the woods walking towards us, mm-hmm. okay? And it was the wind was crosswind, okay? Mm-hmm. And he was walking towards us. So I'm, I, I figure, okay, he's going to spook a deer our way. I was concentrating on, in the woods yeah. really hard. I'm concentrating. And then all of a sudden, I hear... Whoosh, what is that? Looking around, what is that? I look, it's my buddy. He's whistling like that. I turn around, here comes a doe, a big doe, walking down right towards me. Oh. And I said, oh my God. So it goes, so I go back, like I whistle back at him. Yeah, I'm ready, old oh man. I'm on the ground, I'm standing there. And <laughs> doe comes walking up, and the doe was, I mean, the doe was. 15 yards away from me. Uh-huh. They're feeding on something 15 yards away. I'm at full draw with a recurve. I pull the bow back. I said, oh, man, this is so easy. <laughs> this is nothing. Uh, this is nothing. Mm-hmm. I let the arrow fly, and I hit it right in the hoof. <laughs> <laughs> and she, and she, she jumped in the woods, and I said, how did I miss that? What, what happened? She jumped in the woods and stood there looking at me, and I'm, I'm looking at her like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I missed. And I said, well, she's going to come back. She's going to get spooked right back. Never saw her again, yeah. obviously. And that was my beginning of bow hunting. And that feeling has never left. I love it. Like, you, you can't believe. You still get that that rush? If you don't get the rush, there's no sense in going out. There's no sense in going out. Because you aren't there to kill something. You're there to hunt. For and sure. it's different. We literally just said that 10 minutes ago yeah. on this yeah. podcast. Yeah, for sure. really? yeah. yeah. It, it's a truth, though. It, it, it it's like a truth. universal truth of, uh, of people who really enjoy the outdoors, you know? It's yeah. like there's that rush of that moment, but it's also the overarching sense of peace and awe. Yeah. You know, you're out there, you're looking, we're looking right now at this valley, right? Beautiful, yeah, beautiful, beautiful valley. And, and there's a question that goes along with that for me. 
that if I ever lose this question, I will quit what I do. Mm -hmm. What is out there? Yeah. I look at there, I'm thinking, well, how many of those turkeys <laughs> might be out there? Oh, I mean, I bet in the deer season, that valley would be, you know. Those There's going to be things. one less tonight, I can tell hopefully, you that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. two less tonight. I mean, <laughs> right. three, man. Three. We're going to let you have one, too. <laughs> That's right. Send some my way if you see any. Just I wish I was with you when you when you pull up on a, a turkey coming into you because you think your heart was beaten before? Yeah. Oh, my well, God. Well, maybe wait. if you bag one this afternoon, you can call him one in the morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That'd be awesome. I've mm -hmm. heard multiple people said you're the master. It's, uh, I'm not a master. Okay, so so yeah, you guys know this, but we're in the we're in the the cabin here, right behind me, or whatever you want to call it, lodge. And yeah. uh, Derek yeah. gave me this little little I don't know what do you even call that thing? <laughs> Kids toy. Kids <laughs> toy. And he's like, you can use this out there to call. And I go out there, and I'm sitting with Todd, who's, who's over with Chess, or uh, who's over with Derek right now to podcast. Yeah. He's, he's like, I was like, should I do this thing? Should I try? He's like, yeah, go ahead. And I pull this thing, and I goes. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, here, let me, let me see that. I was just like, oh man, I just like made myself look like a complete jackass out there. But that's part of the process. That's, that's, that's no part idea of the what process. You got to learn how to do it. That's right. Hey, that's I slammed right. the door one time of a truck, and I didn't mean to. It would just have it out in the field, and, on the, hunt, the, and the gobbles they were all over the place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like, well, yeah. well, I'm doing all this crap calling. I just bring a door, or bring a door sound, and you know, get the turkeys to come in. I mean, sometimes. You know, you do all this scientific type calling or yeah. whatever, and yeah. just the stupidest thing works. You know, right, yeah. right. Hitting your freaking hat on your leg. That's hey, that works. It worked. <laughs> it, hey, <laughs> it works. It's all it's all about from what everyone's told me as a newer hunter. You know, everybody says yeah. it's all about knowing what they do. It's about knowing yeah. what they do, how sure. they live, what yeah. they do is. Yeah, and how to mimic it. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, I mean, what's your favorite animal to hunt? I mean, overall, turkey without a doubt. Really, without a doubt. It's yeah. thrilling. Because yeah. you're not hunting the turkey. The turkey's hunting you. Yeah. It's technical. It's really good because you're, the turkey is looking for you. And, and it's a question of how many times you're going to call. You know, you don't want to give, your, you don't want to give it away because if, if you're calling all the time, the bird's never going to gobble. Yeah. If, if you stop calling all of a sudden, now the bird is coming in. He thinks you lost interest. Mm -hmm. He's going to gobble. Now you have an idea where he is. You know, and it, it's a game you got to play because if you gobble, if you talk too much to the bird, he's going to know, okay, look, hens don't do this. Yeah. This is something's up here. They're going to move on, you know. Well, they're not but, stupid. No, they're not stupid. They are not stupid. And it's fun. I love it. I it, love it. It is a rock. I mean, that compared to deer hunting, I mean, I've, I've deer hunted quite a bit yeah. in the last few years, and you see them and you get super, I mean, you just get so excited. But it's not like, their vision as isn't as good as a turkey. Everything everybody's told me, like if you move, it's it's over. Like they're gonna blow. Nothing has vision like a turkey. It's a, a waterfowl. Something I did for many years. It's very interactive as well. To a, you know, to a certain extent. Um, but and and a lot of ducks have really good eyes. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing in nature I've ever been around that's mm -hmm. remotely close to the eyes of a turkey. I mean. If they see you, like if a whitetail smells you, you're in trouble, right? Mm -hmm. But and if mm -hmm. and he just said earlier, if if they could smell no, like we do, we'd, we'd never kill them, you know. Get them. But the eyes of a turkey are really what you have to get past. You know, they can hear really well too. Mm -hmm. So it, they're just a fascinating bird, and it's such an American bird, you know. Like I mean, there's a great story behind like you know how. Ben Franklin wanted to use a turkey as America's symbol instead of a bald yeah, eagle. Right, you know? so there's right. such an Ameri the first Thanksgiving. I mean, it's it's really a lot of history. But once you get out in the field, you hear that gobble, gobble, gobble. Man, it's awesome. <laughs> oh, it sure is. <laughs> what? So uh, you guys made that DVD? What? Probably what, how many years ago was that? Oh yeah, it came out in 05, 06, okay. right in there, the end of 05, 06. Years, years ago. Yeah, yeah. 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 The, I watched it. I got Chester was on my show a few months ago, and he's mm -hmm. like, "Yeah, we made this DVD." I sorry, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name. Wildlife what? and Wild Times. Yeah. yeah, you guys are in that. What? How did that come about? I mean, it's so cool to just watch you guys out there just stalking. You look like you're having so much fun. I don't remember how we decided to do it. We just wanted well, to hunt. Yeah. So I met him at a show, and my friend of mine and I, he was a reporter. Oh. And uh, oh. I was a wildlife writer, and we're metalheads. So we you, said, "Wait, both of you? Huh, huh? You both like metal?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we did this. We decided we we're going to come up with a website called the Metal View, and we get a chance to meet our favorite rock stars and talk metal, right? Like the View, but with metal. Yeah, it's before the View. <laughs> I would never have named it that afterwards. <laughs> Trust me. Anything that makes me think of those people, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now that you ruined my day, uh, yeah. no. So we, we we did that, and we you know we have met different people. And interviewed. I mean, I had the pleasure of interviewing Ronnie Dio, and just it was a lot of cool stuff. And so Man of War's coming to Dallas, and they don't play the states a whole lot. 
So me and a buddy of mine went to the show and I called their management company to set up an interview. And I was hoping it would be him, you know, and he shows up. Wait a minute, hold it now. Let me let me back up now. I'm oh, in the we're I'm gonna back, the real story. The real story. I'm in the yeah, the behind the scenes <laughs> shit. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> I'm in my room upstairs, hotel room upstairs, and I've been doing interviews. At just Joey and I were switching days off. You know who who had the interview last time? Okay, it's my turn. And it just happened to be my turn that day. So I've been talking to people all day long, and I had to sing that night. Like I now, was, I was <laughs> like now, but I was exhausted when the showtime came. You know, but I just didn't want to do any more. Chester was late for his interview. I don't his remember time that part. That's late. what he says. <laughs> <laughs> he was late, and so I went back upstairs, and you know. Just got in my hotel room. I always have a turkey call with me. And I was in my hotel room. I'm just practicing purring and different clucks and see what sounds I can make with different calls I had. And my phone rings. I pick it up. And, and it was, it's my manager. He says, your final interview is here. I say, he's late. He said, but he's here. He came along. I says, I don't give a shit if he's here. <laughs> I, said, I said, fuck him. I, I'm not doing it. I'm tired. I love it. Very I'm man not doing it. Very man. He, says, he says, yeah, come on. You got it. This last, gun, last one, just cut it short. You know, the last guy, you know. I said, oh, Jesus Christ. All right, okay, I'll be down. So I didn't even take the turkey call out. I just got in the elevator, and I went downstairs, and Elevator door opens up, and I walk out there, and uh, he says, I'm Chester Moore. He says, how you doing? I'm Eric Adams. Nice to meet you. Shook hands. Shook hands with his friend there, and then Chester comes up to me. He says, well, before we do the interview, he says, can I ask you a question? I says, sure. What? He says, I read someplace that you're a big hunter. Yeah. He said, now, is that bullshit? Is that true? Or what? what is that? I moved my turkey call. I moved it, and I'm... <laughs> in, in a five-star hotel lobby. I'm there. Now, my guitar player was with me from my band at the time, who was a mega Manowar fan. And he, and, and Did he, he cry? And he goes, no, he goes, we're in. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he goes. That's he like leaned a, over in front of him and goes, we're in. And I'm going, thank you. It's like a movie. It's yeah, like, yeah, exactly. like something that happens in a sitcom or exactly. something. He was a sitcom, that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that was good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was fun. That was so fun. the That's DVD. Started. He, uh, we started doing. He said, "What about filming a few things?" And then we had some meetings, and we ended up doing the DVD, which won uh, X Wilson Craft from Texas Outdoor Writers Association mm -hmm. that year. Ended up beating out like Texas Parks and Wildlife and a lot of other uh, great programming, and we're very proud of that. You know, so that was a lot of fun to do. But the more important part is we became friends, yeah. and we've got mm -hmm. to hunt and fish all over the country together, and that's been a, a crazy adventure because it's like culture clash. Yeah, it was good. Here's the guy from Texas, and here's the guy from New York, right? And so <laughs> it's just always an adventure. Like, I scared him with all these hog stories and rattlesnake <laughs> stories and, yeah. and almost die freezing up there. So it was like an even trade-off. You know? <laughs> yeah. I, feel, I feel like he's more in danger of freezing up by you than you are of coming down here. Well, I'll tell you the truth. The first When he came up to hunt deer one, it was, I mean, he came up in the dead of winter, and I mean the dead of winter. It was cold. The wind was howling. Mm -hmm. But he was here, so my buddies were all, we're going to take him out hunting. We're yeah. going to show him what this is yeah. all about. So oh, we yeah. all went out to the spot and put Chester up in this tree. And uh, one no, of my let me back up now. <laughs> oh, God. Here so we they go. take me this tree that's like the leaning tower of Pisa, like this. <laughs> and it's frozen with ice. What do you want? And it has a little ladder like this with those cute little public land ladders. You know, you go like this. <laughs> and I'm supposed to climb about 15 feet on this thing, dressed like the kid on Christmas Story. You couldn't get up. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> that was me. And I'm up in this tree, and the, it's like it lake cold. effect snow and like... It was wind blowing. It was cold. It was, so, real, it was so cold I wanted to take a shit just to have something warm to sit on for a while. <laughs> it was cold. I've been there, man. Oh. It was cold. I was about to die, and his friend Jay was filming this. And so they <laughs> call me on the uh, they call me on the on the radio. Yeah. And they go, goes, Chester, there's a deer coming. There's a doe. She's coming right down the creek towards you. And Chester's okay. like this. No, <laughs> trying to I, keep warm. I literally, I literally <laughs> said. I'm climbing out of the stand. I literally got out of the stand. I said, I'm done. I couldn't pull back if I wanted to. I was so freaking cold. I said, we got these deer in Texas. I'll see you down in Texas. Oh, man. You can keep New York deer. Let's go do something in the warm months. Oh, Welcome to funny. the north, buddy. Exactly. Well, I told him. I told him back then. I said, you know, this is a true story. I said, yeah. 
I, I, I'm a pretty much uh, a lot about waterfowl, and I said that the brain of a duck is about that big, and when they fly freaking south in the winter, and I'm <laughs> and I was like, I know why they go south now. It was unbelievable. Genius. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Smartest animals on the planet. There you go. I got you. Yeah, that's why I'm down here right now. It's super beautiful. But yeah. the, no, that DVD was sweet, man. You guys run around. I think I bought like one of the last two copies you can find. Online. Oh, really? Yeah, that's really? awesome. It was awesome. That's I forgot fun. to bring it too. Derek wanted to watch it, but I uh, forgot it because uh, so, yeah. I brought all this crap instead, all these cameras and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you guys done any other stuff together besides that? I'll send you one, Derek. Okay. Oh, you got a couple. <laughs> You're holding that on us. No, just kidding. No, we've, uh, I mean, just every few years we get together and hunt and fish, or mainly hunt. You know, yeah. I'll come up there, and uh, like the turkey season in New York is only till noon. So I went what? fishing with this friend yeah. Mike. Uh, we went stream fishing for brownies, caught brown yeah. trout on the street. And I like it because, like, we have great fishing in Texas. We don't. We have, like, one river that has year-round trout, the Guadalupe. And the stream at my house, you catch, like, grinnel, which are both in, and, like, mud cats. I go behind this little little league in town. I'm catching brownies and stuff. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, dude, I would love this. This is awesome. So we, we do that kind of stuff and just keep in touch. And uh, yeah, and uh, you know, he's hog hunted and killed some big hogs here in Texas. And with me, shit, my pants like, though, I was scared to death. Yeah, really, first time I was down, this guy's telling me, oh, well, there's these hogs. They'll chase you. They'll they're hot. they stay on the hillside and come after you. You got to be careful. They can kill you. They'll go right for your legs and pull up, and you'll bleed to death before you get any help at all. These are really bad. And and don't forget about the scorpions. There's scorpions everywhere you go. Spiders will kill you. You got to be careful of the spiders. You got some badass bees fire here, killer ants. bees, fire ants. You know, you got to be careful. So I think it's here. all true. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm telling him, I says, you, fuck you. I says, the only thing you got to worry about up north is whether or not you're going to fall on your ass because of the ice. I says, you got nothing to worry about anything when you're out in the woods. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, I mean, I've, I haven't done any hunting and stuff in New York, but I mean, I'm all over Ohio all the time. And, you know, this is a whole new ball game for me. He did the same thing to me. We had a little meeting before we came down here. He's like, he's like, yeah, yeah, you guys, you know, come down to Texas. You make sure you get some tall boots and some snake chaps. I thought he was messing with me. Oh, no. And I was like, okay, well, uh, do I really need that? You're like, nah, well, I, I don't know. And we pull up to uh, the place where Derek's land lease, and he's pulling through his stuff, and he's pulling out snake chaps. I'm like, shit, was I really supposed to bring that? Like, you can't even buy those in Ohio, I don't think. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do? Look, uh, we, we have all this stuff here. The chances are it's not going to kill you. But it's always in the back of your mind. <laughs> and <laughs> you mentioned this. This, remember, this brings back a memory. <laughs> We're on the first hunt we ever did with Keith Warren in yeah. Brackettville. Well, I shot like a 26-pound Rio. He killed, I think that was the first one he killed with the bow, right? That was the first one with the bow. I got so it. Yep. it was a great hunt. And me and Keith's cameraman are dropped off on this Sendero, which is a road, a little road in the middle of nowhere. And he drops us off. There's nowhere around us to go. And I hear, mm. yeah, it sounded like I, a drone now. But I, back then, I thought it was like an ultralight airplane. Mm. I'm going, mm. And I look up, and I kid you not, there is a swarm of bees <laughs> that's bigger than this whole building facility. It cast a shadow for three or four seconds over us, and it flew over us. And I'm like, don't Get move. Out of here. No, no, true story. He said that don't move, no, no. don't move. I said, don't move, don't think, don't breathe, just don't look. And he goes, what? You just shut up and don't move. Oh man. And I'm sitting there, and I'm. He goes, what is that going over? This is freaking bees, dude. In the name of Jesus, please don't die. I'm, I'm freaking out, man. And I wasn't walking with the Lord back then, but I'm calling out some prayers. Like I need, remember, remember, remember Lord. And they go past us. He goes, what's that bees? I said, yes. And so I said, turn the camera on. I said, okay. I said, you hear all these things about different kind of animals and reacting to fear. They say bees can smell fear. I have just proven that a lie. <laughs> I've never been so terrified in my entire life. Because most of the bees down close to Mexico down there are the Africanized bees, you know. So, uh, you know, chances are they're not going to get you. But once again, there was a movie called like Swarm in the 1970s I saw as a TV movie. And it was in the back of my mind, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, yeah. You know, you probably they smell, say they can smell fear because that's just you shit in your pants. <laughs> <laughs> That didn't happen. Maybe that's why I didn't attack. I held off. You know, See? That kind of thing. smart. Yeah. So, uh, do you hunt everything with Bo? You're hunting out here turkey down here with Bo. Um, I try to hunt everything with Bo. I mean, I, I'm not afraid to use my rifle either, mm -hmm. but, yeah. you know, I, I prefer bow hunting. If I, you know, if the season closes and I haven't got my freezer still empty or I've got a lot of tags left, well, then I'll grab the rifle and go out there and fill my freezer. But I really prefer hunting with a bow. Mm -hmm. I really do. Well, and so you you two write together as well for I'm sorry the magazine Texas Fish and Game. There's so many fish. Yes, Texas. Yeah. Fish. You write for Texas Fish and Game. You're from New York. Yeah. How's that work? Well, we have a boating <laughs> editor from Maryland. So there oh, you okay. Go. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's fun. It's, it's just fun. we we when it come time when I was uh, executive editor and I'm editor in chief. There was a slot open for our hunting editor, 
And um, I was looking for someone that was like a regular guy term type of hunter who's like goes and does it like, you know, we we'll go cut his own shooting lanes and, you know, go out and scout and stuff like that. I said, man, we've got to go with Lou. And um, he's a creative, funny guy. So I thought, you know, he'd be really good for the, for the role. And that really was the thing is, is with Texas Fish and Game, we always try to make it for whether you're a billionaire or can barely afford to buy a license, you know. Mm-hmm. So he fit that role so much. And we wanted to integrate more archery stuff in there. So there's always going to be a lot of the archery stuff yep. with him in Turkey. Yep. So that's how that worked. He's been writing for us for like 15 years, 14 years. Wow. Like that. Has it been that long? Yeah, like Holy 14, 15 God. years, yeah. Well, it must not suck if you think if it I enjoy it. I, I enjoy <laughs> it. You know, I, I, I take what really happens sometimes, mm-hmm. really happens, and I go to school on it, and I and I tell what I do, you know, mm-hmm. in a magazine. Like, mm-hmm. when it says, I cut lanes out. Yeah, I cut lanes because I was in a tree stand one day, and I saw the deer just out of my... Yep. Just out there walking out to the cornfields, and I'm thinking, well, how am I, I got to get those deer to come my way. So I get down, and I, I, I took a bunch of heavy branches and knocked them down and, and made a path. I, I, cut, I cut a pathway right by my stand. Yeah. And deer, lazy animals are going to follow the easiest route, mm-hmm. and it worked like a charm. They came walking right down to me. I saw them yeah. coming. All oh, this is beautiful. It was great. Yeah, and I'm, I mean, I, I was telling Chester, I mean, I got into hunting probably three, four years ago mm-hmm. now, and it, it's just such a game changer. I mean, I do a lot of stuff. Like, mm-hmm. I do music, I do uh, video, audio, all that's like, mm-hmm. dorky shit that <laughs> takes a lot of time and effort. But this is, like, this is my, like, area where I can just not worry about it. Yeah. I can sit out in here. Well, yeah. you do have to worry about it. We just told you about the goddamn snakes and the, <laughs> no, and the shit. It's like he's passing it on about. now. Can like I tell you something? something? Tell you. Every time I... How many ways can I die this, here This today? morning, This Let morning was no different than any other morning or any other time now. I walk down to my, the blind down there, and the very first thing I do is turn on my flashlight, and I look inside that blind, <laughs> and I really look at everything in that blind to make sure there's nothing crawling in there that can kill me. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm not that cautious yet. I, I need to get bitten. Wait till you hear. Yeah. In the dark, and then you might be. Yeah, I'll probably shit my pants. <laughs> yeah. So, what's better, Texas, or New York? Which one do you like hunting in? Texas, more? without a doubt. Really? Yeah. Without a doubt. It's, yeah, without a doubt. It's amazing down here. Well, you know what it is. You can hunt so many different animals here. Than you know, up in New York, they have the laws. They're, they're crazy laws sometimes in New York. We just told you. I mean, hunting turkeys in New York, it's over at noon. And if you got a, if you got a big boss gobbler coming in, and it's five minutes to twelve, and you're not going to get him in time, that is ridiculous. That's the way it goes. So you got a choice of either breaking the law, hoping the game warden's not waiting for you at the car, or you're out, or you're done for the day yeah. and come back another day. It, down here in Texas, sun up to sun down. Well, not even. Well, if it's exotics or hogs it. after sunset, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, and it's interesting you say that about Texas because I would agree, but I will say this, if I, on, on freshwater fishing, taking out oh, largemouth yeah. bass, which we destroy everybody but Florida on mm-hmm. in Texas, they got better freshwater fishing up there. Yeah. I mean, you got to figure they have, this, all, they have, you know, brown trout, they have salmon, you know, they got wildlife, they got crappie, they got a lot of smallmouth, they got yeah. pickerel, they got pike, they got all that stuff. So on the, on the, on the freshwater fishing front, I would give New York the nod. Yeah. You got to take the largemouth bass out because, you know, I mean, it's, come on. We didn't invent the Florida bass. We just improved on what Florida did. Here in <laughs> well, do you, you could ever get on the lakes, other great you lakes? You know, I, I do sometimes, but I, it's not my thing. Yeah, I'll do it if nobody else is. If somebody boring. Eh, you know, it's, it's okay. As long yeah. as, if there's beer in the boat, I'll go. <laughs> you know, that's. Now that is what I'm talking you know about. What I'm You're saying? the only one drinking with me last night. Hey, Everyone's you see just, that? Yeah. See that? I'll drink you tonight too. All, all right, right. <laughs> a deal. I'll be there. And okay. I'm the guy up in the back of the boat obsessed about how deep the lure is and we're running right <laughs> into the right level because I might be catching a pike, you know, that's yeah. that kind of stuff. Because I can see that. There's a dichotomy good. there. It's mm-hmm. really good where I live because it's the Finger Lakes area. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. so, you know, you've got you've got uh, every lake is known for a certain fish, mm-hmm. which is really cool. When he came up, I says, Yeah, we'll go to Skin the Atlas Lake, we get some rainbows, skin the skin atlas. Yeah, he thought it was Canadian. So look, 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 I know you make fun of Texans and our draw in the South, 
You tell me how skinny Atlas is. S K A N E A T L E S. It's probably his Native American. Skinny Atlas. <laughs> I'm like, you come up north, we got some pretty crazy yeah, names and stuff. Anyway, I just want to say Skinnadles. That's that's in my. But everything it. down here is like half in Spanish too, so it's, that's hard. I, it's the same thing. I'm like, yeah, yeah that's it exactly. What you said that have, you know we got the rainbows in in, in uh, Skinny Atlas Lake. Yeah, and um, we did lake trout somewhere. And I'm there's like, a certain way to fish them too in Skinny Atlas Lake. Believe it or not, you lose warm and a, and a mar- marshmallow. Yeah. What yeah, is it? What I know. Do? As weird as that what? sounds, where do we do the lake trout? What lake was that? The lake trout are in Owasco. Owasco, okay, that's right, Owasco. Owasco, you go, you go another lake over. It's uh, it's a uh, Cuga Lake, and they're known for bass. Yeah, you know what's cool about that for me going up there, and like the trade off of him coming down to Texas. He never got to hunt hogs, Rio Grande turkeys. I could help facilitate that here and exotics, and then up there on the freshwater fishing scene because a lot of the stuff that I would sit and look in the field and streaming outdoor life and sports mm-hmm. field. I, I was getting to do. So that was just a really awesome thing for me to get there and catch lake trout and salmon and like, you know, yeah. brown trout and, yeah. and smallmouth and things I never caught here. So that was, one, and that's one of the fun things I think people who now because of the internet and how we can partner with people around the country and around the world, what a great opportunity for us to trade out what we do have to offer, you know? Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, have you have you hunted anywhere else besides yeah. Texas? And- oh, yeah. I've hunted South Dakota, uh, Missouri. Um, where else have we gone? Indiana? In Indiana. Nice. Hunted Indiana. Neighbors to Ohio. Um, yeah. Word to the wise for anybody who's watching this or listening to this, okay? If you're going to go with a bow and you're going to go on a trip someplace where they have to, TSA has to check your bow and open it up and they put a paper in saying that it's good, you're not going to blow anything up, they cover it back up and lock it up and everything. Test your bow. Shoot at a target before you go hunting. Because here's what happened to me. I went Uh-oh. to Indiana, and I was doing a TV show out there. And it was for uh, Nathan Jones' uh, Wild Extremes is mm-hmm. the name of the show. And we were going to turkey hunt. Mm-hmm. And I got pretty accurate with a bow. And so and he's, he's a great caller, and he's got decoys that look real. They are real. They're stuffed birds. They're, oh, it's really, sweet. really perfect. So we went out there. A blind was set up in the middle of a field, and I questioned that. And he said, don't you worry about it. These birds, they don't care about these blinds. They'll walk right up. They don't care. Mm -hmm. And I believe it because that's exactly what happened. We're out there in the middle of a field. He's calling. Big gobbler comes in, and he's filming it. And I says, here we go, here we go, here we go. Gobbler gets out about 25 yards. That's a gimme shot. Right, yeah. I pulled the bow back. I'm at full draw. I asked him. I says, "You got him on film?" He says, "Yeah, all set. Shoot anytime." I get ready to go. I shoot. I put my 20 yard pin on him, just a little bit, and I go, "Boom!" Let the arrow fly. I missed the bird by two feet. Oh, that sucks. And I looked. That's why I looked at the camera, and I says, "I suck." <laughs> what else am I gonna say? It's a yeah. live. It's a television a, show. And, and he's a horrible misser. All right, all right. <laughs> like, <laughs> Meltdown I really supreme. Am. I go crazy. I but go this nuts. is. But this, this story right here is one that needs to be told because of what what's happened here. What happened is yeah. that I, I went. I said, "How can I? How can I be that far off? Yeah. It's crazy." I was comfortable. I wasn't nervous. I, mm-hmm. Well, I got back to the ranch and I I took some practice shots, missed the target entirely. So I looked at my looked at my sights. Somebody at the TSA thought it was funny to move my sights just a oh, little bit and lock my bow up. Yeah, man. So remember that when you want to go on a trip, make sure those sights didn't move. So now I mark it with a pencil, mm-hmm. yep. and there you go. Mm-hmm. You know what, where the sight is. Some with the bow hunting, I've been. I just got into bow within the last like two years because yeah. it um, it takes your season from like a week to like infinite you right. know, where, where i live you know and it's super hard it is very mm-hmm. technical like it's like it, for me the hardest part was always it's not just about pulling it back the same way every time it's mm-hmm. about your stance it's about how you're lined up and it's really difficult so and i had a really shitty bow that didn't help at all but um a lot of those dudes <laughs> blame out it was, on the bow yeah, that's good yeah <laughs> always blame it on the bow it ain't my fault damn it i'm good but the uh out west some of those dudes are shooting like 100 yard shots kill shots i mean that's, yeah but that's that, nuts i would never i don't recommend that i would never crazy. do that crazy i mean you're looking at a kill zone the breadbasket is your kill zone, right? And so you want to make sure, you know, it's, it's where the most blood loss is going to be, and that's where you want to hit. Yeah, and if 100 yards, I mean, come on, you can have the fastest arrow in the world, and you may be accurate at 100 yards for the Olympics. That's great. But at, a, at an animal, you don't have, you have to have respect for that animal. If you're going to shoot at 100 yards, a deer just walks one step in front, 
before your arrow gets there, you're going to wound that deer. Mm -hmm. And I don't care. It's just not worth it. You owe it to the animal yeah. and you owe it to the other hunters that hunt that hunt to respect that animal. And, you, and taking a shot, a wild shot like that, is absolutely insane. You know, I mean, I won't take a shot in an open field. I won't take a shot more than 40 yards. I won't do it. Yeah, you know. 50 at tops, maybe. Social media has pushed that a lot because yeah. now now because of the twitter universe 144 character world we live in right mm -hmm. everything is down to pretty much the kill shot now yep so yep. you got highlight reels the most watched hunting videos are usually an animal attack which i like or <laughs> uh or a compilation of kill shots and the journey's not there so it's all about well i, I can one up and you know uh, God bless great marksmen, but uh, I, I'd have to call in an airstrike at a deer a thousand yards away. You know what I mean? I, I, you know that's not my gig. You know, so it's all about whatever you're able to do ethically. You know, and uh, and I, I don't call myself a bow hunter. I'm not. I'm a hunter, mm -hmm. but bow hunting is probably fifty percent of what I do. If you sum total everything, including like waterfowl and things like that, on obviously I'm not that good, but. On that bow hunting this side, this is going of on things, social media. You should say that you are that good. Yeah, well, rewind that. Okay, I, I'm gonna try to think on honesty. It's really <laughs> yeah. weird. No, I 100 uh, percent agree. But <laughs> well, on the bow hunting side, it makes you train your whole experience to get close. And there's something about drawing back and being able to look the animal and see its eyelid, you know, see its eyelids and eyelashes, and 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 being that close and be able to instead of you always say pick a spot, you know, you draw back. Sometimes I picked a tick that I saw, you know, <laughs> to be able to have that level of detail, you know, and do that and closing the distance is, is a lot more fun for me than going, well, it's 1,800 yards away and I have to aim seven feet high and hope that it doesn't shake its behind before I shoot. <laughs> That's you know? crazy. Yeah, not me, not for me. Yeah. What's uh? You had any crazy shit happen out in the woods? I mean, <laughs> uh, well, that's I mean, obviously we all have, but yeah, craziest yeah. shit. Oh man. Well, um, one time I told Chester this. He, oh, he did. This. He did a. He did a story on the, the most dangerous animal in the woods. Yep. And they happens to be humans. Yep. Yep. And um, that's the truth. Yep. I was uh, hunting down in Ithaca, New York. And it was a long walk to my stand. The only way I can walk there is walking a, a railroad track mm -hmm. all the way up to my where my stand is. And so because it was such a long walk, I got there very early. And I left well before sunrise, right? And I'm walking along. I got to have a flashlight. I'm walking across bridges and stuff with the, on the railroad tracks. And I'm walking along. And I caught something ahead of me. I kind of flashed at it. And it was a guy. I don't know what the hell he was doing there, what was going on. He was walking towards me, and I looked at him, and he looked like, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. He looked like he had blood all over his face. He oh. looked like shit, and I'm thinking, okay, all right, what's this guy? The bloody guy. What's he going to do here? <laughs> what's this guy going to do? And I just I just walked by him. He, I, you know, he was walking this way, and I kind of nudged to the right, and I, I walked by him, but I kept listening my ears were like a deer's ear you know yeah. turn the other way focused on hearing that what's going to happen here and that scared the hell out of me and it could anything could have happened at that point sure you know what the hell was that guy doing out there we, was he like just freaking out was he wasn't he, hunter he wasn't hunting he was dressed normal he the was bloody, dressed normal he was a like shitty clothes he was a bum he was just like a, a bum who was hanging out in that area Right? Covered in blood. <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, why not? Is there any songs about that? <laughs> <laughs> There's more cannibal corpse. Than yeah, that. yeah. A good day to die. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, I, I got chased off a mountain in Northern California by drug pushers. Yeah. In a, in a chase down a mountain. That was the craziest thing ever happened Jeez. to me. And um, it was in 2002, and me and my dad went up there. I went and did a great white shark cage dive, and... Since we were in the Pacific Northwest, me and Dad decided to go exploring. And I had some Gen 3 night goggles, and we're in this area. And I look down, and I see, um, and on, we're told at the top of this mountain, there's the tule elk and all that were, were rutting. So you're going to see tons of elk and all this stuff and bears and all the Chester kind of stuff, you know. And I'm, like, looking, and I see this light beam come up. I said, Dad, there's someone down there. And we're, we're not, when this is in the middle of nowhere. We're talking a long way away. He said, I don't see a light. I said, I don't either. Put goggles back on. Yep, it's, it's shining right here. And it clicked. Someone had night vision in an infrared light that could only be seen. So I had heard that there was drug drug growers and stuff out there. But, I, you know, they're all over the country. Mm -hmm. I had yeah. no idea the depth out there. 
Yeah. So we throw our junk in the vehicle, and by the time I turn the lights on, at the we were on like a, a road that split on top of the mountain. The other side, light, headlights turned on. So somebody down here signaled to that person. And they were about five seconds behind me hitting that road. And I kid you not, I am from Orange, Texas. I live at 10 feet elevation. I'm in seven, 8,000 foot elevation on a mountain driving. It's dangerous just driving. Yeah. I'm going 70, 80 miles an hour at some points on straightaway trying to get away. They're, they're trying to hit us. And I got up calling the Forest Service the next day and they said, You're lucky you made it alive, but I drug pushers there. Well, thank you. You could put, you know, drug pushers in the woods <laughs> sign or whatever. <laughs> and they kill tourism, though. Yeah, cause, exactly. <laughs> two years ago, um, probably grow tourism, sadly, but two, two years ago, I go to the National Wild Turkey Federation show and meet some Forest Service game wardens. I'd never met some that worked for the Forest Service itself. And, and the guy said he had worked in Humboldt County, California. And I said, Dude, I told him my story. He goes, You're lucky you made it out alive. And so I hear he goes, Go watch Murder Mountain. And it's a series on Netflix about that area and this and, and all that stuff. So that's kind of on my end one of the crazier. And, and other than being charged by hogs several times and you know that kind of stuff. It's, okay, yeah, but we want to tell everybody hunting is fun. It's <laughs> it's, a, it's it is. fun. It's a safe it's, activity for the family. It's fun like a roller coaster. <laughs> it's supposed to scare the shit out of you every once in a while. So, so there was a time my friend found the Ted Bundy inscription in Utah in the woods. So that's fun for the family. You know, that actually happened. Yeah, you 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 told me that story. I think on your last podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, Ted yeah. Bundy escaped prison, and yeah. Chester's friend found him in the in found, the, woods. found no. the inscription in the woods. Josh Sloan did. Yeah. Oh God! He sends me a text after he got to a, a, on the way home. He said, "I found this so far off trail, yeah. and it was it said Ted Bundy, 1971. That's the year he escaped prison in, U, in Utah. You know, so <laughs> that's messed up. So yes. talk about scary stuff in the woods. That you know. So uh, what's the game plan for this evening on the hunt? What's your, what's your what's your strategy? If it's so I brown, can steal it. it's down. <laughs> if it flies, it dies. That's a good no. strategy. I like that. <laughs> no, Try I to learn know. from the pros here. We've got where? Where are they? We've uh, got birds. Uh, we've kidding. got birds in the area, and every every time we're around there, we, we're just trying to zone in on where these birds are, and we're, we've changed strategies a little bit this afternoon. Yeah. Um, they seem to be the ones I'm hearing seem to be behind me. You know, about forty-five degree angle behind me and down mm -hmm. the hill a little further. So I yeah. moved my blind down there. That's where I'm going to be this afternoon. Chester heard this big one twice. I mean, yeah. yesterday evening and then this morning. And I'm going kind of the same thing he's doing. I'm I'm going d down into the draw, and I'm gonna we're right at the tail end of the season here, so mm -hmm. I'm not worried about spooking them away. I'm gonna just get down there and be real quiet and get there early and just sit and wait. And if I hear him call. I'm going to try to talk to him and get yeah. him to come down. Maybe in that open space, maybe they're afraid right now because of the pressure to come out into the come out into the you know the, the fields. So maybe that little opening that's in that thicket, get that head to pop up around long enough so I can blow it off. See, the point is that r right now, the end of the season, yeah, but also the hens, the hens aren't active after a certain hour. Mm -hmm. You know, they were this morning, but shortly after we, about the time we quit hunting actually uh -huh. the hens go to their nest mm -hmm. and they've got to lay their eggs so they lay on their eggs and, and that's when the toms are still walking around looking for yeah. some action yeah. and that's the best time to get them so we're yeah. hoping that you know four thirty, five o'clock we can still call one in he's still looking you know mm -hmm. what i mean so we'll see maybe we'll get lucky yeah i'm i'm I still have the thrill. Like, I'm super excited to get back out there. Yeah. This midday break for the podcast sessions we're doing is just killing me. I want to go out there and shoot something. <laughs> but um, wh one thing, I guess, before we kind of wrap up here, I don't want to keep you too long. You already did a podcast before this one. Yeah. So um, does, does uh, like, this outdoor stuff, you know, it's kind of like a lifestyle. You know, you just, it's not like a hobby or like a thing. It's just like part of what you do at this mm -hmm. point, you know, mm -hmm. like all of us. That's why we're here. That's why mm -hmm. we love it. So, but is that, like, when you do music and stuff, does that have any effect on you? like just like lyrically or like with anything is, is it filter in i've all i asked this to all of my friends who are musicians or anything even chester like does it have an impact i mean does what have the outdoor impact? like the just oh. being an outdoorsman a um, hunter or do you that's just a kinda, real good question is there a strict separation i think there's more of a separation which is what i love more about hunting i mean again if i don't if i don't see an animal that's okay that's okay. I still love being out there. And there's one spot when I first started hunting that was up on a, it was a green pasture up way up in the, you know, on this hill. And my tree stand was on the edge of that. So I could look down this green pasture and beyond that, I could see the city of Ithaca mm -hmm. way off in the distance. And it was the most peaceful time, yeah. you know, and it was like, 
man, that's just beautiful. That is just gorgeous. And I'm looking at this whole scenery here, and it didn't matter. Yeah, if the deer came, that's fine. You know, uh, that's fine too. But there are days when I say, boy, I hope deer don't come and ruin my day. <laughs> Because I'm really having a great time here. This yeah. is beautiful. Just chilling. You know, I, I love being in the woods, and I love, you know, having the woods wake up around me when they don't know I'm there. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that is the coolest feeling for me, mm -hmm. you know. And it's quiet. It's peaceful. And in Man of War, it's not quiet at all. Yeah. It wow. sure as hell isn't peaceful. It's really <laughs> ass kicking. So, you know, it's a different thing. It's a whole different yeah. thing. I, I escaped the music world by going in the woods and, and calming things down. You well, know? I imagine that's pretty, it can be pretty stressful doing the, like, touring and stuff and, and, and being in the studio. I mean, I've barely scratched the surface on any of that stuff, and it just kicks your ass. It's long days. And that's why, that is why I love coming out here. You yeah. get to just, like, life's stressful. You get to come out here, though, like, waking up at 4 a.m., no big deal to come out here. I'll go sit out there all day. We That's came right. in. I was like, Are you sure we got to go in? I'll, yeah. I can stay hungry for a few more hours. I'm yeah. not worried about it. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful out here. Yeah. Though. yeah. It's gorgeous. Um, this this ranch, I've never been to this anywhere down here, so yeah. this is extremely beautiful. What do you yeah. Is this your first time here? No, no, no. Oh, first time at this ranch, this ranch yeah. 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 I've known Gene Double for draw. a year or two, yeah. but I've never been to the ranch, you know. And uh, But, you know, this is kind of a representative in terms of the habitat and terrain, but they've done a lot to augment that and to you know i'm doing a story with them actually on mm -hmm. being able to transform the habitat back to a better state in terms of these cedar trees that soak up so much water drought so they, they're putting a lot of work into it and the reason we're seeing abundant games because of the heart and soul of the people who have the place and the, and the work and you know i was in metal bands for 18 years just as like i like playing music i chose to be a journalist instead you know and uh but even now you know, there's a whole lot more time in front of a computer than there is in the great outdoors for me. Oh, yeah. And it's just the way cool. it works. It's the outdoors business for me. So when I actually get an extended time to be out here, you know, it's like cleanses the soul, you know, mm -hmm. and I uh, feel closer to God out here. And I also just get to do what I wanted my whole life from, from as early as I can remember. My, the main thing I wanted to do was be in wild places and see wild things. And I look out, like I talked about, wondering what's out there. You know, I may be in, in the tucked away under that cedar today and, you know, have the de decoy in front of me. I may or not, may not see a turkey, but I might see a ringtail or a red fox or a white-tailed deer. And all those things enhance my life because those are the things I've dreamed about. So being able to connect with that is a win no matter yeah. if I get a turkey or not. But I say that. All that stuff's wonderful, but... The grand prize would be the turkey. <laughs> I'm going to kill so, a turkey. <laughs> we're going to try to kill a turkey. Yeah. If you, if I don't hear a gunshot by 8 p.m., I'm going to be mad. Well, I can't hear your bow, obviously. <laughs> no, you won't. Unless it's a really good I might give a yee yeah. I might give one of those. Yell as loud as you possibly can. There we go. You got it. That's Lou. That's Lou. He's screaming. He's screaming. There you go. Well, hey. Thank you guys for uh, coming on, Chester again, Lou, for the first cool. time. Thank Welcome. You. All right, man. And uh, I can't wait to get out there and hunt with you guys a little bit and I, I hope you guys both get turkeys. Good luck. There. I want you to get your uh, first bird. I, I want you to too, do it. I want to hear all about it over dinner tonight. You hear about me shitting my pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. That wait, wait, happened, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. You're not done yet. Okay. Uh, before, we've, we've been laughing all day. I want to hear about, I want to hear the story we talked about earlier. You've been making fun of me all day for. So, Chester, please. So, so <laughs> this is bizarre. So uh, we're talking about human dangers in the woods. And I, and I talked about, there was a situation many years ago when a deer lease I was on. And I go up to this blind, mysterious blind on the lease, right? And, I, and, and the blind door is open. It's out of the season, so I don't mind getting close to it. And the, and the whole outside of the door is covered with, like, porn. <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck is this? And, and I look in, and the entire, and this is a three-person blind, huge. <laughs> the entire <laughs> interior of the blind is <laughs> porn pictures. And where the <laughs> space is on the wall where there isn't porn, they drew porn. <laughs> And I'm going, and you'll wonder why I say the most dangerous things in the woods. <laughs> and what do we call that? What did jack you call shack. What did I call that? That's the jack shack. The jack shack. You got to live out on the jack shack, man. I plead the blood of Jesus. I'm out of here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this episode of the Aptitude Outdoors podcast here on YouTube. If you can, help me out. Go down below. Hit that subscribe button. Also, if you're feeling up to it, head over to iTunes or Stitcher and leave the podcast a rating or review. I would doubly appreciate that. 
Want to take a minute to thank Lou and Chester for coming on and sharing their awesome and hilarious stories from a lifetime in the outdoors. You can learn more about those guys by searching their names on the internet. They're all over. Chester's always posting cool stuff and, well, Lou's a famous rock star. So if you can't find him, you got bigger issues to work on. Before we go, I want to take a minute here to say thank you to the sponsors from the Hunt Fish Podcast Summit event. So let's hit it. All right, first up, there's Chicken Boy Lures, who arguably have the greatest backstory of all time, which you can check out for yourself at chickenboylures.com. They have plenty of proven baits to choose from, including the Whippin' Chicken, the Bubba Clucker, the Psycho Chicken, and the world-famous Chicken Chip Butt Sauce. Up next, we have Captain Experiences, where adventurers are able to search captainexperiences.com to find charter fishing trips that meet their criteria, compare and contrast them, book within seconds, and show up to the dock with a great understanding of who they're meeting and what they'll be doing. Guides can focus on fishing, knowing that Captain Experiences will take care of the rest. And last but not least, we have Saltwater Recon. By utilizing the latest technology in live high-definition interactive webcams, saltwaterrecon.com is the know-before-you-go resource for millions of people, whether boating, fishing, or observing real-time coastal conditions. Saltwaterrecon.com's array of HD cameras combined with expert boating, fishing, and weather content will give visitors the information needed to plan a safe and successful day on the water. And before we go, I'd like to quickly thank the Double Draw Ranch for hosting us, Spot Stalker Guide Service, which is Derek's Charter Company. You should definitely check out if you're ever in the Houston area. The Vanessa House Beer Company, Seven Day Addiction, and Metro Emergency Upfitters. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.